It's time now for your weekly fishing reports and real-time outdoor news. This is the Southwest Outdoors Report. Of all the lakes in our southwest region, none has been beaten to a bloody pulp anywhere near like the lake you're looking at over my left shoulder. That is Possum Kingdom Lake. It's located in northwest Texas. It's a gorgeous lake that's been through generation after generation of fantastic fishing and water recreation of all kinds. But beginning in 1999, this lake has endured a series of torments unlike any other lake in our region. It began with a horrific golden algae outbreak in 1999 that killed every fish in the lake and then repeated itself over several more years. That was followed by one of the worst droughts that this region has ever seen, a 50 to 100 year type drought that has now dropped the lake about 10 or 11 feet below normal level and put many boat docks and lots of property on dry ground. And then finally, the wildfires that have tortured this area over the last three or four years, devastating property and land like has never been seen before. But the great news is Possum Kingdom is a resilient fishery and has made a tremendous comeback. And on today's show, we're going to go out, explore the lake and show you exactly what's been happening and what the fishing is like right now at good old PK. And while we're doing that, we're taking you around the region for your latest fishing reports from your favorite lake. Glad you're along with us. It's gonna be a fun next half hour. Let's get this party started back at the FSN studio where Julie has your weekend planner. The Salooner tables are forecasting fair to poor conditions for weekend fishing. The best chances for game fish activity during daylight hours will take place in the afternoon starting around 2 o'clock on Saturday and 3 o'clock on Sunday. The sun will rise at 6.57 and set at 8.02. And we just had a full moon on Tuesday, so evenings will feature a waning moon 84% illuminated. Stay with us, we have all of your fishing updates from around the area. Plus, I'll return with the Whataburger Ask the Pro for some tips on what lures to use when fishing a new lake. The Southwest Outdoors Report is brought to you by Costa Sunglasses. See what's out there. By Lou's, setting a new standard in fishing performance. Feel the difference. By Strand Fishing Lines, the standard of dependability. And by Strike King Lures, number one in fishing. There's gotta be fish. They're thick down, down there. There he is, straight down. Good white. Good white bass, big one. All right. Hey everybody, we're on Possum Kingdom Lake today telling a really good story. Look down here, look down here. Of an incredible comeback of one of the most uh, resilient fishing lakes you can possibly imagine after all the trouble PK's been through. There is the number one species going on at the lake right now. This lake is absolutely loaded with white bass and big ones like that one. My good friend Randy Wood, who guides here, and Micah Costa, who guides here on a regular basis, say they have been limiting customers out on a daily basis, no matter how many customers they have in the boat, everybody gets their 25 white bass limit in probably a half day's fishing most days. They're schooling on top. That one hit a slab, bouncing it off the bottom. So there you go. and. Uh, two or three different ways to catch them. You can get out here and drive around some of these flats off the Brazos River Channel and watch for these surfacing fish on top. Keep a good pair of binoculars handy so you can scan the surface and watch for those. Or you can just take a slab, or I've actually got a jig head with a little Bobby Garland uh, plastic bait on it. I'll show you all that at the end of the show, but you can bounce those off the bottom. That fish was in 28 feet of water, and I wanna tell you, the screen was just almost blacked out. They are thick in here all over the bottom. White bass fishing is incredible. I'll tell you some of the other species of fish that have also made a big comeback at Possum Kingdom in uh, just a couple of minutes. But first, let's get you to Brian Hughes with your Texas Freshwater Fishing Reports and Bill Olson is down on the coast. Hi everybody and welcome to this week's Lone Star Lakes brought to you by Camo Ramic. Now we're going to start fishing at night on a couple of Texas lakes. We're going to start with world famous Lake Fork. 
where you can catch big bass in 15 to six foot of water. Now, right now, I wouldn't go any shallower than six foot. That'll come later in the year. However, if you can find some grass, some timber, and a channel around the 10 to eight foot mark, that'll be perfect for catching your big bass on fork. Try either Texas rigs or jigs, or you can even slow roll a spinnerbait around that deep cover. Over on Palestine, boat docks, boat docks, boat docks, and you have to find the ones that actually still have some water around them. Throw your dark spinner baits and your buzz baits at night for those fish on Palestine. And finally, when we talk about catfish, I'm hearing a lot about Lake Livingston and the deeper creek channels around the island. You'll wanna use either your cut bait or your prepared bait on those catfish and get ready for dove season. We'll talk about that next time on the Lone Star Lakes Report. That's this week for Camo Ramick. I'm Brian Hughes. Be sure and check in on the web. Now let's check in with Mr. Bill Olson. He's on the cut. Hi folks, this week's report is brought to you by Port Aransas on Mustang Island, the fishing capital of Texas, where anglers enjoy pristine bays, estuaries, 18 miles of surf, and the deep blue waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Plus the local restaurants will even cook your catch come sundown. Come fish and play Texas Island style. For more information, visit portaransas.org. Well, with just over a week remaining in the month of August, subtle changes seem to be taking place along the Texas coast. Temperatures have moderated and some fall patterns are beginning to appear. Now on Sabine Lake, the clam bed bite remains good on the south shoreline, as well as good fishing under the birds. Galveston anglers freelining live shrimp at the jetties have scored. So have those fishing the Trinity Wells. Also, anglers wading the Trinity shoreline early and late have caught solid fish on topwater lures and soft plastics. Now, around Pascavallo and Port O'Connor, the surf has been very productive for trout when winds have allowed. Tarpon to 120 pounds have been caught in the second gut off the beachfront. That is crazy. Deeper grass on the outside of Dagger and up the Lydia Ann Channel are also holding trout. Excellent trout fishing is on in the upper Laguna Madre with some trophy fish mixed in. Piggy perch are being preferred bait now that croaker have gotten too large. Redfish are schooling up and are active on the flats. Fishing should improve over the coming weeks. Out of Port Isabel, Gaswell Flats near marker 37 have some schooling drum hitting live shrimp. The causeways have trout, mangrove snapper, and sheep's head hitting live shrimp or perch. South Bay has scattered reds, trout, mangrove snapper, snook, and small drum hitting most any bait. This weekend, both Saturday and Sunday have a double tide schedule of two high and two low tides each day. I'm Bill Olson, and I'll see you on the coast. Fish makes you brainy, bright, and beautiful. To celebrate its golden anniversary, Texas Parks and Wildlife Television is adding humor to an old film reel as a tribute to the past 50 years. There's a number of things that hadn't changed in the 50 years. Our mission in serving all Texans and the natural resources that we're charged to steward is going to stay the same. From our fisheries and wildlife biologists and game wardens and park rangers and education and outreach specialists all around the state, we'll keep carrying on that mission every single day serving Texas. To commemorate the anniversary, the agency has created a public service announcement featuring half-century milestones, both good and bad. How we communicate with our constituents and outdoor enthusiasts is literally changing by the day. Uh, the advances in social technology allows us to communicate more efficiently and more effectively. To further this technology, Texas Parks and Wildlife has set up a 50th anniversary webpage at lifesbetteroutside.org where people can share stories and photos and inspire others to enjoy nature. The agency hopes people will sign up to become a Texas Parks and Wildlife Ambassador and pledge to do things like visit state parks, take a kid hunting or fishing, and watch or share a video showcasing what's made life better outside in Texas. We absolutely appreciate all Texans uh, who take the time to hunt or fish or visit their state parks. Uh, those outdoor enthusiasts are the ones that provide the funding to help support conservation and outdoor recreation in the state. For Texas Parks and Wildlife, this is Abe Moore. Welcome back to Posse.
Fishing Kingdom, everybody. Next up, I want to tell you the amazing story of the striper fishery here at PK. For many years, Possum Kingdom was well known around our region as one of the best striper lakes in the entire state of Texas. Some huge stripers were caught here. But during the devastating golden algae blooms from 1999 through about 2007, it was thought that nearly every striper in the lake was killed. In fact, nobody caught a striper, nobody heard of a striper being caught for many years until this year. And all of a sudden, some stripers are beginning to reappear. And right now I wanna show you a couple of still photos from a couple of friends of mine who guide here on Possum Kingdom who have found those stripers down in front of the dam. Again, they're all being caught on live bait, live threadfin shad and small gizzard shad. They're caught in fairly deep water. Those fish, again, ranging from six to eight pounds, but some fairly decent catches of striped bass now starting to show up here at PK. In fact, before our camera actually got here today, I took my little GoPro camera out early and shot some video, and you're looking at some of the stripers that are being caught at Possum Kingdom. They're in a small area, only down in front of the dam in some really deep water. There are some little small schools roaming about, but there are some fish beginning to come back. Ooh, grandmother, she's gonna be tired after this. Don't you lose him, mister. Okay. You <laughs> might not get this again. <laughs> Hi, Pace. It's a nice one. Yeah. Try to put him in that bag. Just come, just bring him straight to the straight boat. Straight over that way. There you go. Yeah, there's the first one. Good job, grandmother. Hey. There you go. Another fish. Oh my God. Now smile for the camera. There you go. <laughs> Nobody knows where these fish stayed during the golden algae bloom because none of the stalkers that Parks and Wildlife has stocked back in the lake have had a chance to grow to that size yet. So these fish hid out somewhere up the creek, up the river, in real deep water during the last bloom and survived it and now are growing to a very catchable size. Hey, let's go up to Oklahoma right now and check on your fishing and lake reports from there with Gary Dollar. First of all, I wanna say thank you to all of you Louisiana and Texas anglers who took the time last week to stop by at the Forest Wood Cup in Shreveport to say hello. I enjoyed our visit and it was fun swapping fish stories with you. Oklahoma fishing across the state, a couple of things going on to make note of. One, on the eastern part of the state that have had high waters, they're starting to draw those down pretty fast now, getting them back close to normal lake level. Two things you can do there. One, concentrate on the main lake points and look for the most obvious visible piece of cover you can see farthest out from that shoreline on those main lake points. Toss your soft plastics in there and also drag a top water over the visible cover. Buzz baits work well, as do the chugger style baits right now. Also, go to the bridge area, fish the riprap. Anytime that water's come down, the riprap can be really good this time of year. Throw a square build crankbait, a shad pattern in that, and also use a tandem willow leaf spinnerbait for fishing that riprap area. On the bridge pillars themselves, use a drop shot rig or a finesse worm. Fish it right down the side of those pillars, concentrating in that top 10 to 12 foot of water. A lot of forage fish are hanging onto those pillars, feeding on the algae there. You're gonna catch some fish on the bridges and around the riprap. The rest of the area that are either at or below normal lake level, you need to look at those break lines, concentrate about 12 to 14 feet deep. Crappie fishermen, most of the reports coming in are the crappie are still in the brush piles, 12 to 16 feet deep, but they're starting to move toward the docks. It's gonna be a lot of fun here the next couple of months as those fish get in on the docks, a lot of dock shooting going on. Great time to be fishing in Oklahoma. The weather still remains incredible, but one thing about it, you can't catch them if you don't go. The Southwest Outdoors Report is brought to you by Exide AGM Marine Batteries. Starts like new, stays like new longer by Gene LaRue and Bobby Garland Lures. With our baits, a good day of fishing is in the bag. By Motor Guy Trolling Motors, engineered for anglers. By Whataburger, just like you like it. And by Nitro Performance Bass Boats, pure performance. Got something. Little bass. All right. Well, it's the uh, correct species anyway. Come up here, little fella. Mm. 
All right, welcome back everybody. Southwest Outdoors report today, traveling to Possum Kingdom Lake near uh, Mineral Wells, Grayford, Graham, Palo Pinto. Man, he is welded right there. And there's just a little chunky, feisty, largemouth bass. We'll let that one go back. And uh, I will tell you that the bass fishing here at Possum Kingdom has also experienced a tremendous comeback. There have been several tournaments held here. The tournaments have been doing real well, but uh, actually a couple of other strange things have happened. I mentioned earlier that uh, Randy Woods and Mike Acosta both guide here. And uh, both of those two guides in the past week before we were here have caught six pound plus largemouth bass while they were striper fishing off Main Lake Points on live shad. So what that tells me is the bass here are healthy, they're growing, and that's two six pounders that I personally know of. They're catching them off these little rocky boulder type banks or uh, chunk rock banks. You can see this one here is uh, chunk rock, which is about the size of basketballs. There are some larger boulder banks that fall off into a little deeper water that some fish have been coming off of as well. But uh, I just picked up a spinning rod here with a uh, uh, this is actually Strand Sonic Braid spooled up on it, and then I've got a Strand Fluoro Cast leader on it. The water here is really clear. I can see my bait down about four feet in the water, so uh, the clarity of the water is really good here, even though it's really low, 10, 11 feet low, but still lots of great looking stuff that hold bass that you can fish along, have a great chance of catching some here at Possum Kingdom, even in the hot summertime. Let's move along right now and check on your Louisiana fishing reports with Cajun Phil and Kevin. Hi friends, this is old Cajun Phil with your Fox Sports Southwest Louisiana fishing report. Tell you what, sorry we're not on the air in person this week. I'm down here in Homa, Louisiana, uh, pre-fishing for a tournament. Captain Kevin is down on Calcio Lake, catches a big old red fish and speckled trout. I talked to him a while ago. He's doing great there. But let's talk about Homa. South of Homa is a place called Zulac, and that's where I'm at. I'm fishing with Captain Bill Lake. He's one of the most reputable guys in this particular area. Captain Bill Lake's been catching speckled trout all year long. Right now, his best time of the year to catch redfish. That's what we're looking for. We got a tournament in a few weeks. We're scouting for redfish. Captain Bill's been coming in. The bad thing about it is he's catching all of his redfish in deep water. He's catching them on uh, cut crab. What he does, he takes a crab, breaks it in half, and quarters it puts it and Carolina rigs it on the bottom in about 20, 25 foot of water and he's catching them. Well, we're going to try to do that with some artificial. Don't know whether it's going to work or not. Also, we're fishing with Captain Kazar. He, Anthony Kazar, he's down here and we're fishing shallow water with Anthony. Now, we did have a good day fishing with Anthony. We caught him on spoons. We caught him on uh, bass assassins, on small grub heads. And the redfish down here are plentiful. The only problem is catching the right size. We need the big old seven and a half, eight, eight and a half pounders. We're catching a ton of four to seven and a half pounders. So you need to make a trip. You want some phone numbers? Give me a call. Come on down. Till then, this is old Cajun Phil for Captain Kevin. Been happy fishing, and may God bless. And we go see you folks next week. Southwest Outdoors Report is brought to you by Mercury, the official outboard of the Southwest Outdoors Report for 11 years running, by Academy, right stuff, low price, every day, and by Tracker Boats, fish the finest. Welcome back everyone, let's get right to your Whataburger Ask the Pro question for this week. Ronnie and Tyler writes, what lures should you use on a lake you've never been to before? Let's see what advice Bassmaster Elite Angler Brian Snowden has to offer. The baits I like to use when I'm on an unfamiliar body of water, especially to cover water fast and thorough, is a crankbait. The great thing about modern crankbaits is they come in a wide variety of shapes, sizes, and designs, and they will fish anywhere from one foot all the way down to 20 feet. So on an unfamiliar lake that you're gonna try and learn for, say, a tournament, you can cover a lot of water very thorough with a crankbait. Anytime the water is above 55 degrees, I'll start throwing those crankbaits. Thank you, Brian. If you want one of your questions to be answered on the show, just visit southwestoutdoorsreport.com, click on the Ask the Pro link, and send us the information. Now let's see who wins a brand new pair of sunglasses on the Costa Catch of the Week. Hey, congratulations to this week's winner in the Costa Catch of the Week contest. He is Kent Hammer of Spring, Texas, showing a 25-inch flounder he caught under the Pelican Island Bridge at Galveston, Texas. 
Kent will win his choice of any pair of Costa sunglasses, and you can do the same by going to our website at southwestoutdoorsreport.com. Right-hand side of the front page is the Costa Catch area. Click in that box, follow the instructions, and you can win your very own pair. And you can see all of the Costa frame and lens styles by going back to our front page of our website, clicking on the Costa logo in the middle of the page. That will take you to their website, and you can see all of their frame and lens styles including the frame style of the month and the one that I'm wearing on this week's episode, Double Haul in the Camo Pattern. Next up on the Academy Sports and Outdoors Right Stuff feature, it's the gear you'll need to come and catch some of the wide variety of fish available at Possum Kingdom. Beginning on the left, you'll see a large spoon. You'll need a four or five or even a six inch spoon to mimic the big shad that these stripers are feeding on down by the dam. Next up in the middle there is a regular half ounce jigging spoon, the one that I use on lakes all around our region. You can catch the white bass on those. And then finally on the right hand side, this is one of my favorites at Possum Kingdom. You take a regular lead jig head and rig on that a Jean LaRue salt head shaky worm and fish that around some of these rock ledges and rock points for the largemouth bass. This week on Stuff That Matters, I want to talk a little bit about a newspaper article I came across, and I like to read a lot of different newspapers, but this particular article talked about a new personal downsizing trend among Americans. People are beginning to scale back and intentionally live on less than they can afford. They're not buying that new car, that new house, that new cell phone just because they can. In fact, they're living off the motto, just because you can does not mean you should. They're finding that life is more fulfilling when lived for a purpose greater than themselves. They're spending more time on people, hobbies, sports, and volunteering. Now the recession started all this back in late 07 and early 08, but now folks are finding that they can live more balanced and more fulfilling lives by living on less than they can afford. Well, something you might think about. And that's this week's Stuff That Matters. I hope you enjoyed our trip today to beautiful Possum Kingdom Lake. I always enjoy coming here. This lake is enjoying a great renaissance in spite of all the difficulties it's been through in the last few years. Hey, don't forget to join us next Thursday night at 1030 on Fox Sports Southwest and Saturday morning at 8 o'clock. If that time changes for any reason, you'll always get the latest updates front page of our website. Again, at southwestoutdoorsreport.com. Also, you can click on the Facebook logo at the top of the page and get lots of news and information and photos and video that we don't have time for here on the television show. You can see the latest episode of our show right in the middle of that front page, 24-7 in full HD. Right below that, click on the YouTube logo to get all of the past archived episodes of our show. From Possum Kingdom Lake in Northwest Texas, until next week, I'm Barry Stokes. Be safe, have fun. Bye-bye.